welcome back to the third installment of Wind Orchestra Masterworks, a conversation where we will dive into the Wind Orchestra's greatest stories and legends. I'm your host, Mike Corson, and here with me once again is the incredible maestro Eugene Corporan. Thanks again for being here, Eugene. My pleasure. Uh, with that, I would like to go ahead and bring in our guest for today. He is one of the founding members of the Lone Star Wind Orchestra, a member of the percussion section who can be found playing the famous conch shell in our first installment of Fridays in the Fall. He's also a very old friend of mine. He and I went to school together back at TCU, and his name is Dr. Andrew Eldridge. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Thanks for having me on, Mike. Absolutely. Uh, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about your involvement in Lone Star, as well as just any other uh, musical ventures that you might be a part of. Sure thing. Uh, so I joined the, the percussion section um, after an audition in the late 2000s. Um, and so I've been playing over a decade now. I'm just so excited to be in the section. I know that playing with the Lone Star Wind Orchestra has, has always been such a rewarding part of what I do uh, with the group. And uh, I don't think uh, Eugene knows this, but one thing I've always talked about that I really enjoy about any group is watching a musician tackle transitions. And to me, the, the real music is in transitions, going between sections to sections. And so I think Eugene is just such a master at doing that. And I've always really enjoyed watching him do that. I've, I've taken a lot of what he does and, and brought it to some of my own groups. Before we bring our conversation to a close here, I want to take a moment and ask both Eugene and Andrew about the percussion section's involvement in the whole Changing Lives movement that Lone Star has repeatedly expressed. You know, for a long time, we always talked about groups as uh, woodwinds, brass, percussion, band, woodwinds, brass, percussion, period. And percussion usually meant, in the early days, a great bass drummer, a great snare drum player, and a cymbal player. And that was it, maybe the occasional bells. Um, it was even unusual to hear wood percussion, to hear marimba, xylophone, anything happening. And what's happened, uh, basically at the end of the 19th century with Percy Granger, um, writing this big piece called The Warriors, where he brought in so many percussion instruments that, and he believed that the 20th century and 21st century were going to be the century of percussion, the famous quote of his. People laughed at him at the time. But what's been added is the idea of keyboards and how crucial they've become to creating resonance and ring in a wind group. Stravinsky loved the winds because they were so dry and precise. But what we gave up, what we give up when the strings are gone, is that resonance that the strings provide. So if you broaden that to include the piano, the celeste, the harp, and electronics these days, mm -hmm. you get this unbelievable, along with mallet instruments, vibraphone, um, marimbas, xylophone, crotales, anything that rings and is pitched, it really changes the sound of the ensemble. And we've had some incredible composers who are also percussionists who've helped with that. Michael Colgrass would be a great example, who's a famous composer, but also was a professional percussionist. Jack Stamp, a professional percussionist. Um, William Kraft, these people have all brought the percussion ensemble in, into, the, uh, into the 20th and 21st century. Um, I remember and think most about our percussion section with two performances that I think were stellar. Um, one was the premiere of Luminosity by Joseph Schwantner that we did at WASB in California on a tour. Um, we had the great privilege of bringing that piece to life. And it, it, Schwantner is one of those composers who really has tapped the percussion. Um, another is, uh, and that's from a section standpoint. And the other performance uh, from a soloist standpoint is when we played Stubernick Fantasy at uh, Midwest in 2016, where three percussionists played one instrument, marimba, and uh, the composer, Mark Ford, was one of the soloists, and we accompanied that. But almost always now, um, the important composers are writing bigger and bigger percussion pe uh, mm -hmm. parts inside the ensemble. So I think it's a crucial, um, a really a crucial uh, addition that's really opened up so much more sound for us in uh, wind music. And our section in particular, it's six to eight artists every time I look back there. Rarely do I even have to 
ask them anything or ask for them to do anything. They're way ahead of me almost all the time. And um, they're so particular about the sounds they make. Uh, some people make a mistake of thinking you just whack something if you're a percussionist and there you go. Mm. They have so many decisions to make about mallet, weight of the mallet, mm. the kind of stick that it's attached to and where they hit the instrument, how they lift the sound. And it goes on and on. And the last thing I'll say is percussions are so unusual because they have to learn how to play 50, 60 instruments. Yeah. That they don't just play an instrument. So this, they, and sometimes it's even a conch shell, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, they, they are, they are doing such wonderful work, uh, in our, in our ensemble and, and provide a fully professional, uh, section, which is such a great, um, model for younger players in our state and uh, who see the videos and so on um, throughout the nation. And I've had, I've had people ask me from Europe and, and um, Asia about how do your percussionists play so well? Where do they study and what's going on? And um, they've, they've provided an unbelievable model worldwide. So that's, that's where I think their contribution lies and continues to grow and when they play separately or when they come into the ensemble, there's a, a great um, musicality to their work. Okay. Andrew, do you want to uh, add anything to like how Lone Star uh, plays a role in the changing lives movement that Lone Star uh, has uh, kind of like just expressed here? For changing lives, one thing um, I was very involved in for several years uh, was the St. Philip's uh, Marimba Ensemble. And, um, and so I was, this was right when I started my time at TCU. And so I would drive out to Dallas once a week and, and spend at least an hour uh, with this inner city uh, school, this private school, uh, teaching them about Zimbabwe and marimba. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to find ways to get them really excited about it. And so we incorporated a lot of songs that they might know and teach them uh, diatonic melodies on the instruments and then incorporate some drums that they had in the closets as well. And we had several performances that the students just really, really loved. Mm -hmm. uh, I can remember one uh, summer camp in particular uh, where uh, we taught a, a week-long summer camp and students came in at certain points of the day. They were learning how to play these instruments. And at the end of the week during the performance, the teachers were almost in tears and they came up to us. And they said, we just can't believe that you did this with all of these, these, these kids. And they later shared with us that they were um, kids that were at-risk students. You know, these mm -hmm. were um, students that were in trouble in their, their yearly school, and they were sent to a summer camp to basically learn how to be better students. And, oh. and, and so when you're teaching the students music, you don't see that part, right? You're just enjoying playing music, and it was right. a really impactful thing to see some of these students and come back year after year just so that they could keep playing in this, this summer camp. Well, thank you both once again for joining me today. If you're listening uh, or watching, please be sure to, just, to uh, subscribe to us. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will be chatting with members of the saxophone section. Until then, we will see you all next time. Bye!